Mm. Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. So, Manchester United are looking at a lot of alternatives around Jadon Sancho. So, the players we are looking at as alternatives to Sancho is Usain Dembele from Barcelona. He's one of them. Now, my only element of concern about Usain Dembele is that, you know, he's very injury prone. You know, he's become injury prone since he joined Barcelona and he joined Barcelona back in 2017. I think Barcelona got him in a deal worth around £135 million. And I think Barcelona paid like, was it £90 million up, £90 million pounds up front? Uh, obviously, you know, with add-ons included in the deal. Usain Dembele has got a contract with Barcelona until 2022, so still a few years left, I think, on his contract. But I think it would be a cheaper solution than Jadon Sancho. Probably you get Usain Dembele for around maybe 70 or £80 million, because I think Barcelona have already revealed their asking price. So, you know, would he be the right calibre player for Manchester United? Obviously, you know, I've inquired about his availability before. Another one of the players we are looking at as a Jadon Sancho alternative is Kingsley Coman from Bayern Munich. He did actually you know, say the other week that we inquired about getting him on loan if, you know, we failed to get Jadon Sancho on the board. Also, to Vinic Vinicius Jr., he's also been mentioned. Uh, Thiago Almeida, you know, he's been another player we've been looking at as an alternative. Uh, Robin Matondo from Schalke, um, he's also another one. Douglas Costa from Juventus, you know, he's been another alternative we've been looking at. And I think it also did mention Gareth Bale as well. But yeah, you know, this probably you know, won't happen. You know, Man United getting any alternative to Sancho. Because I still think there's a possibility chance that Jadon Sancho could join Manchester United in this summer transfer window. Now, Borussia Dortmund did recently beat Altach by six goals to nil. Obviously, you know, in pre-season. And reflecting on that, Jadon Sancho has come out and insisted that he is happy uh, to remain with Borussia Dortmund. It's also saying now that Man United are in danger of missing out on Sancho because reportedly we have offered him a pay cut. And reportedly then it says we improved our offer to like £190,000 a week. Obviously, Borussia Dortmund sporting director Michael Zorg, he's come out and said that Sancho will stay at Dortmund and they did and the decision is final and he's going to be part of their plans for next season. So he's ruled him out making a move to Manchester United in this summer transfer window. He also revealed that he secretly extended his contract, uh, did Sancho, until 2023. Um, because his current contract uh, went until 2022. Jaden Sancho's. Now obviously, you know, the other week he was looking very, very imminent that Jadon Sancho was going to be signing for Manchester United because you had Fabrizio Romano, who's a very reliable Italian journalist. He said that negotiations between Manchester United and Borussia Dortmund were at an advanced stage. And he said that, you know, Sancho agreed. Sancho agreed personal terms with Man United. And he said he was set to sign a five-year deal with the football club worth around £200,000 a week. But like I've said to you know, throughout the course of this Jadon Sancho transfer saga, it has been Borussia Dortmund's asking price that has been the stumbling block. Because Borussia Dortmund have said several times they want um, over £100 million. And we have said, you know, we are not determined to meet their valuation. I think it said recently we'd set our limit for what we're willing to pay for the player. We're only willing to pay like £60 or £70 million up front. Hiroshi Dortmund's valuation is around 108 million. I think it said they was looking for like 90 million pounds up front. Obviously, you know, that'd make him our most expensive signing with that figure and our most expensive 
and the most expensive English player in history. <laughs> but Jadon Sancho said quite a few times that he does want to come to Manchester United. You know, Borussia Dortmund CEO the other week, though, denied that Man United were in advance talks to sign the player. But we're the only club that, that are in for Sancho now anyway. Obviously, you know, Liverpool were in for him before, they're no longer in for him now. Chelsea were in for him before, they're no longer in for him now. But uh, the other week, you know, Borussia Dortmund did come out and say that, you know, they've come to accept the fact that Sancho wants to leave. So, you know, Dortmund have been in the market, you know, looking for a replacement for him. You know, they've been looking at the likes of Memphis Depay from Lyon. There was also um, looking at Rashika from Werder Bremen. There was also looking at looking at Jonathan Eco from Lille. So they have, you know, been looking for the replacements, but we missed out on the deadline to sign Sancho, and that was Monday because Dortmund said we had until the tenth of August um, to sign the player. But um, yeah, there's still a chance, you know, we could get him on the board, but we're not giving up on the signing of Sancho. You know, Ed Woodward's come out and said that, you know, this Jaden Sancho transfer saga will go on for the entirety of the. The entirety of this summer transfer window. Uh, Sancho has enjoyed three good years with Borussia Dortmund. Like I said, Dortmund paid eight million for him for Man City, so Dortmund got him for next to nothing. Um, obviously, you no. Know, Sancho did enjoy two years with Manchester City, but the main explanation why I left Manchester City is because he didn't get a shot in his first team opportunities. And before he was at City, he was at Watford, and he was at Watford for several years. I think he was at Watford for Mage the age of seven to the age of 14. And I think if Sancho is sold in this summer transfer window, you know, City do get around £15 million pounds due to the clause that took him to Dortmund from Manchester City uh, around three years ago. But we've already made a promise to Sancho that, you know, we are willing to offer him the number seven. Obviously, you know, we have got number seven vacant at the moment. But, you know, like I said to you before, we've had a lot of good number sevens up and down the generations. Uh, but like I said, you know, Fabrizio Romano has spoken about this Jaden Sancho transfer saga a lot. Christian Fack, he's a transfer expert. He's also spoken about it a lot. Uh, Simon Stone from the BBC has also spoken about it a lot. But it is Babushi Dortmund's asking price. That's um, the stumbling block, like I mentioned. Um, I think also to it said that his wage demands are now also the stumbling block because Dortmund have said that, you know, they're looking for around, is it £200,000 a week? But, um, yeah. But I'm not going to fully disregard Sancho coming to Manchester United because he's still a chance that we could get him on the board. Um, in reality, you know, we should Sancho should have been officially a Manchester United player last Friday. But obviously, you know, there were stories coming out back in February, weren't there, saying that Jadon Sancho agreed almost every little detail of the move to Man United. It said the only thing that hadn't been agreed was actually, you know, the fee. So actually, you know, he could stay at Dalton for another season and maybe we'll try and get Sancho maybe in the January transfer window or wait until the summer of 2021 because maybe then he will be available for less than, you know, £100 million. Pounds. Um, there were stories coming out the other week saying that we'd submitted a bid in for Sancho. It said we put like an £89 million bid in, but it had been turned down. But we denied that we'd put this bid in. Um, and then after that, it said that we agreed the initial £60 million fee with Dortmund for Sancho. And it said there'd be like 30 or £40 million in add-ons. So uh, that is the news on that. I uh, want to give you some news on Ansemain Fati Vieira from Barcelona. Now, according to reports from Spain, uh, Manchester United have made a fresh inquiry for Ansu Fati Vieira. Ansemain Fati Vieira. Now, obviously, you know, was it earlier on um, in the summer that, you know, George Mendes had. Um, submitted an uh, off, uh, offer to Barcelona for Ansemain Fati Vieira. Now, I'm very sceptical that we'll get the player on the board because obviously, you know, Barcelona have got no intentions of selling the player and he will cost a substantial amount because his release clause, Ansemain Fati Vieira's, is around £150 million. 
But reportedly, this dub his release clause doubles when he turns 18. So when his release clause doubles, his release clause will be like 300 odd million pounds. Or does it more than double? And Samain Fati Vieira has got a contract with Barcelona until 2022. I think it was last year he signed a three-year deal with them. But um, also, it is extendable uh, for a further two seasons. Now, this was um, the player's first season in Barcelona's senior squad. I think he's made around 24 La Liga appearances. He did make his senior debut at just the age of 16, did answer main Fati Vieira. I think he became Barcelona's youngest um, goal scorer ever in the Champions League. But yeah, but he is only the age of 17, is this player. So I don't think you know Manchester United are going to get him on the board. Like I said, in total, he's been at Barcelona around eight years, hasn't he? You know, he's had, he had like seven years in their uh, youth setup, and obviously, you know, this season he's been in their senior squad. Um, before he was at Barca, he was at Herrera, and I think he also had a spell at Sevilla, but that was during his youth career. I think we're probably seeing him as another alternative to Sancho, to be honest with you, but he's actually not going to cost more money than Jaden Sancho. We'd only get Anthony and Fati Vieri if we triggered his £150 million release clause. But yeah, obviously, um, you saw my video that I did yesterday, took a while to upload. Um, I give you the breaking news, didn't I, regarding Jack Grealish. Now, to be honest with you, I'm not going to fully disregard Man United signing Jack Grealish. I still think, you know, there's a good chance that Jack Grealish though, could stay at Aston Villa for next season because obviously Aston Villa avoided relegation. If Aston Villa would have got relegated, then I would have fully assured that Jack Grealish would have left them. Now, Villa have already revealed their asking price. You know, they have said that they won £80 million for Jack Grealish. I feel as though that's, you know, too much for Grealish. I think, you know, we're hoping to get, well, we was hoping to get Grealish for around maybe £40 or £50 million. We'd have probably got him for around that, you know, if Aston Villa would have got relegated, you know, maybe we'd even got him for £30 million. But anyway, Jack Grealish is set to hold um, crunch talks with Aston Villa's chief executive, Christian Perslow, where, you know, when he does return from holiday. So he's going to talk with Aston Villa uh, regarding his future. Obviously, you no, know, Jack Grealish has been one of our priority targets for a while. I would take Jack Grealish at Man United if the opportunity was there because obviously, you know, he's well proven in the Premier League. His stats have been good throughout the course of this season. Grealish uh, can create chances as well and he can also score goals. And his versatility is good. And up until this point, he's spent the entirety of his career with Aston Villa. He's been a Villa player since the age of six and he has been in their senior squad since 2014. So he's enjoyed like six years now in the senior squad. He's got a contract with Villa until 2023. Don't forget, he said that we was willing to more than double Jack Grealish's wages. He did say, was it the other week, that Villa had offered Jack Grealish a new two-year contract worth around 100, 100 grand a week. So this would keep under contract with Villa till 2025 if he was uh, to sign it. You know, Grealish is only at the age of 24. So you know the news regarding Jack Grealish. But the story is coming out saying that actually Donna van der Beek is um, our priority. I think he's actually you know, our preference over Jack Grealish. Well, Donna van der Beek is obviously a much cheaper solution than Jack Grealish. Um, by the way, just want to give you some news on Oli Gunnar Solskjaer. So, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer um, has conf is, uh, outlined these plans. for Man United to reach the the Europa League final. And he's actually you know, said our players must use her from our, obviously, our other semi-final defeats. Obviously, you know, 
We're into the Europa League semi-final. It is our third semi-final this season because we've already know we already got to the um, EFL Cup semi-final and we also got to the FA Cup semi-final and that. But Solskjaer has come out and said that three semi-finals are not good enough and that. And, you know, Sevilla is going to be a test this Sunday. It really, really is because Sevilla are a pretty good team. You know, last time we played Sevilla was back in the last 16, back in 2018. It was Champions League last 16. I think, you know, we had lost by two goals to one. Uh, Wiz and Ben Yedder had scored both goals in the game. I think Lukaku scored for us, but it was 0-0 in the first leg at Sevilla. But this is a test for Man United. You know, it is our second European uh, semi-final since Ferguson's retirement. But, you know, Man United are actually, you know, the favourites to win the Europa League. And I've already uh, given you the main explanations why I want Manchester United to win the Europa League. Uh, because if we do win the Europa League, it will be our first trophy under the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer era. Also, too, it will end our trophy drought because we haven't won a trophy for over three years. Also, too, it will be our fourth trophy overall since Alex Ferguson's retirement. And it will be our second um, Europa League trophy because obviously, you know, we did win the Europa League back in 2017 under the Jose Mourinho era. We beat Ajax in the final by two goals to nil. You know, but I think, you know, Man United can definitely win the Europa League. But we progressed to the semi-finals, didn't we? By obviously you no know, beating Copenhagen in the last in the quarter-finals by one goal to nil. Obviously, you no know, that did go to extra time. Uh, obviously, you no know, in the last sixteen we beaten Lask, and in the round of thirty-two we had beaten Club Bruges. But I think in this game against Sevilla, probably Solskjaer is going to make some a few changes from the 1-0 win against Copenhagen recently. I think Solskjaer is definitely going to go with his strongest 11 against Sevilla. You know, he's not obviously going to take any risks. That's one thing I do want to confirm with you. The preview for the Sevilla game will be coming up um, later on this week. Later on this week and that. But I think so far this season, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has exceeded expectations at Manchester United. He really, really has. Obviously, you know, we've got qualification for the Champions League. <clears throat> and I did say how important Champions League was uh, for our players, attracting players and for the financial structure. I think we did get an extra £70 million in revenue for getting qualification for the Champions League, by the way. Also, too, uh, we finished third. I also thought that was a fantastic achievement. And like I said, we have progressed to three semi-finals. But earlier on in the season, you know, you wouldn't have thought Solskjaer would have exceeded expectations because obviously earlier on in the season, we enjoyed our worst start ever to a Premier League season and that. But uh, like I said, Solskjaer's got to exceed expectations for next season because next season he's going to have probably have bigger expectations to exceed. Uh, next season, you know, I expect Man United to challenge for the Premier League title. Uh, I want us to be up there competing with the likes of Manchester City and Liverpool. But I do think we are going to recruit well in this summer transfer window. This is Solskjaer's fourth summer trans. This is Solskjaer's fourth transfer window as Man United manager, and his second summer transfer window. Solskjaer's already outlined his transfer plans. You know, he's instructed our board to go and get his preferred targets. And I think he has said that he wants Man United to make at least at least three signings in this summer transfer window. I think Woodward has said he wants Man United to make around three or four signings in this summer transfer window. And obviously, you know, I've identified the areas in the squad where he does want to strengthen up because he's still deficiencies in the squad. But uh, there's big decisions that have got to be made in this summer transfer window you know, of what players we're going to recommend in and obviously you know what players we are going to get rid of and that. You know, we need to focus on the outgoings as well as the incomings because quite frankly, you know, he's still deadwood at the football club. Um, I think, you know, we need to get rid of Lingard. I want us to get rid of Pereira. I want us to um, 
get rid of Jones. I want us to get rid of Rojo. I want us to get rid of Diego De La. So they're the players I want to see leave Manchester United. Some Man United fans will say we need to get rid of Smalling, but Solskjaer insists that Smalling does have a future at Man United, and he was in regular contact with him whilst he was on loan with Roma. I'm surprised Roma didn't get Smalling permanently, or I'm surprised they didn't extend his loan for another season at least. But Chris Smalling has been a loan servant at the football club. But, you know, like I said, our transfer budget's around £140 million in this summer transfer window. But when we sell players, our transfer budget will increase. <clears throat> like I've already said to you, there's still contract decisions that Solskjaer's got to make because we've still got around, is it seven or eight players' contracts that are due to expire next year? We've got to make a decision on those eight players. But we have extended a lot of players' contracts, to be fair, since he came in. Um, Solskjaer's also got a goalkeeping decision to make. Um, like like Solskjaer said, you know, prior to the FC Copenhagen game, you know, he's faced, he says he's faced a dilemma with three of the, our goalkeepers because he said it's going to be hard for us to keep De Gea, Dean Henderson and Sergio Romero all at the football club for next season. I think one of them are going to leave. I think, personally speaking, Solskjaer needs to put Dean Henderson as our number one for next season. <coughs> Because I do feel as though now that Dean Henderson has got that experience behind him. Because he's enjoyed two successful loans with Sheffield United as Dean Henderson. Um, but, you know, David De Gea has been our number one for several years. But I just don't think he's no longer reliable enough to become our number one, to be our number one because... You know, he's been a liability in the last couple of, year, of years as the guy, you know, he's, like I said to you before, he's had seven good years out of the nine years he has been at the club, you know. So, Solskjaer's got big de decisions to make at Manchester United, but Solskjaer's been at the football club now over a year and a half. And like I said, you know, these positives to take from his tenure so far, you know, throughout the course of the season, Solskjaer's promoted the youth well. Um, our record against the top six sides has been good. Um, since he got appointed in his Manchester United manager, more or less everybody's been given their chances to express themselves, including the young players. You know, because he said that everybody would get their chances to express themselves when he, you know, did get appointed in. Um, like I said, our recruitment has really, really improved under Solskjaer. You know, Solskjaer's bought the players that I wanted to recommend in so far, but so far he's made four permanent signings and he's spent just over two hundred million pounds on them. Uh, because we have been criticised criticised for several years, reflecting how poor our recruitment policy has been. You know, we've been criticised for overpaying for players as well. You know, so I have definitely seen improvements under him. Also, too, a lot of players have improved under Solskjaer, especially the top players. But there's still improvements needed at Manchester United. You know, I have seen an, upturn, an upturn in form since January. Obviously, because we are... Um, unbeaten in our last 14 league games. We haven't lost in the league since Burnley. And don't forget, you know, we did go on a 19-game unbeaten run in all competitions until Chelsea beating us in the FA Cup semi-finals and that, you know. But, like I said, there's still improvements needed at Manchester United. Um, but I think, you know, Solskjaer's learned a lot. He really, really has. Um, obviously, now he's got that managerial experience behind him. Because Man United is the third club in his managerial career. Also, too, I think Solskjaer now knows his best 11. He knows his best formation. Throughout the course of the season, you know, in a lot of games, he was very tactically naive. But in some games, you know, he showed a lot of tactical flexibility in that. You know. But, yeah, there is positive to take from his tenure. You know, there really, really is. There really, really is. And like I've said to you know, in the last seven years, there's been a lot of problems at the football club. You know, there haven't only been problems, you know, with the managers and that we've had, because in the last seven years, we've had different managers with different philosophies. You know, there's been a lot of cultural problems at the club. There's been a lot of problems with the club's board. There's been a lot of problems with the club's ownership, the Glazers. There's been a lot of problems with Ed Woodward. You know, there's been so many problems at the football club. And this is one of the main explanations why we have been so inconsistent for the last seven years. You know, in the last seven years, you know, we spent, you know, a hell of a lot of money. We spent nine hundred odd million pounds on players. Um, like I said, the managers that have been sat since Ferguson was obviously you no know, David Moyes. He got sat after eight or nine months. You know, we sat Louis Van Gaal after two years. 
and sacked Jose Mourinho after he endured two and a half years at the football club. We've only won three trophies since Ferguson left, you know, so that just indicates how how inconsistent that Manchester United have been, you know. <clears throat> but like I've said to you before, we haven't dominated English football since the Alex Ferguson era, and like I said to you before, it's going to be extremely difficult for anybody to replicate Ferguson's legacy. And it's going to be hard for someone to last as long as Alex Ferguson did. But let's put it into the equation. Ferguson didn't settle in straight away because he didn't win out in his first four years at Manchester United, did he? But our success came under Ferguson without a shadow of a doubt. You know, because even before Ferguson, uh, before Ferguson, you know, we was inconsistent, like we have been for the last seven years, you know, since Ferguson left. You know, weren't good under Ron Atkins, Ron Atkinson, you know, weren't good under Wolf McGuinness. I think Wolf McGuinness enjoyed like 18 months at the club, only managed to recruit one player in. Uh, and Franco Farrell, you know, we got relegated under him back in 1974. And that's um, 45, 46 years ago, the last time, you know, Manchester United were relegated and that, you know... But, um, yeah, like I said, I'm looking forward to the game on Sunday against Sevilla. Uh, the only injuries we've got now is Phil Jones to Anzebe and Shaw. They're all expected back for next season. We know that next season starts on the 12th of September. But we've already seen signings made in this summer transfer window, haven't we? You know, we've got Arsenal that have just recently signed Willian on a free. You know, you've got Manchester City who signed the likes of Ferran Torres from Valencia for around 20 odd million. You know, they got Nathan Ake from Bournemouth for around 40 or 41 million pounds. I think they also signed another player. You've got, you know, Chelsea, you know, they signed Akim Ziyech back in February for around 37 or 38 million. They got Werner from RP Lesbig for around 47, 48 million pounds. So Chelsea spent Chelsea spent around eight to nine million on them players. You know, Chelsea are now looking to get Havertz. They're also looking to get Cheerwell. I think Cheerwell's their number one priority target. You know, Liverpool have made, is it one signing this summer so far? They got Chesikmas. I think they got him for around £13 million. I think they got him for Olympiacos. And I think they're close to getting Thiago as well from Bayern Munich because Liverpool wants to continue their dominance up. Um, Leicester, you know, they'll probably want to make some signings, you know, Tottenham will want to make signs, but Daniel Levy does like to spend money, uh, big money at Tottenham, does he? So, yeah. So, we've also got to, you know, rely focus on other teams around us, you know, how they're recruiting in that in the summer transfer window. Yesterday, I give you the news, didn't I, on Paul Pogba. Obviously, you know, he did drop a tweet on social media saying that, you know, there would have been a big announcement um, yesterday. Obviously, you know, didn't happen in terms of Pogba signing these new contracts. I think it was something to do with Call of Duty, his uh, new team, something like that. But anyway, um, I expect Paul Pogba to sign a new long-term contract at the football club <clears throat> because, obviously, there were stories coming out a few weeks before the season finished saying that Pogba was close to signing a five-year deal with Man United. Um, Fabrizio Romano um, said that you know Paul Pogba's happy at Manchester United and he said that Paul Pobb wants to stay. And he said that Man United will enter negotiations with his agent, Mini Raliola, over getting him a new contract. I think uh, we're set to hold contract talks with Pogba uh, after, you know, the Europa League is finished. Because it said that Paul Pobb is expected to sign um, his new contract at the end of the season. As it stands at the moment, Pogba just got under a year left in his current contract. But the club do have an option to extend it for a further year. But we need to get him his new long-term contract to end uh, the uncertainty over his future and that. But um, yeah, I think it's very, very good that we are keeping Paul Popper at the football club. And I think uh, for next season, Luke Shaw will remain our first choice left back. <coughs> um, Williams, of course, is still developing. Don't get me wrong, I think Williams has enjoyed a very, very good season for Man United. <laughs> He's enjoyed a very, very good season for Man United, but you know he's not as experienced as Luke Shaw, is he? <laughs> Um, Williams has played a lot of games though throughout the course of the season to be fair but Luke Shaw will remain first choice uh, for now I think in the next couple of years probably Williams will become our first choice left back 
So anyway, guys, that's everything to update you today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon. Thanks for watching.